Two. What was two? Creating the fragments. This is important. Creating the fragments. So, what we're saying is that we've got our genes, so we've got our long DNA molecules, and we're interested in chopping these um, long DNA molecules up into smaller fragments, and that these fragments contain the introns. So, ideally, what we want is to chop the DNA so that you know the fragments contain introns and the introns then affect how long these fragments are and then we can compare fragments from different people or species but how do we chop DNA okay so DNA is chopped using enzymes in particular restriction endonucleases okay so there's lots of different types of these enzymes and what they do is they bind to double-stranded DNA so restriction endonucleases they bind the double-stranded DNA and they cut at the site that they bind so this the sequence of bases that they bind is kind of like their substrate so G a A T T C. So this DNA uh, strand carries on in that direction. We've got another strand here. Its complementary sequence would be C T T A A G, and that's so. We're just looking at a a particular um, site in a long DNA molecule. Obviously, stretches off that way. Stretches off that way. But the enzyme, the restriction endonuclease, echo R1, that enzyme, when it recognizes this sequence, so it, will, it might just be moving along this DNA molecule, but when it binds, when it sees or, or feels this um, sequence of bases on the DNA strand, it will bind to it. And when it binds to this site, it breaks the phosphodiester bonds at a couple of places, which I'm forgetting. And I will just check after the G's. Oops. Okay, so when it binds this molecule, when it binds the DNA and recognizes this particular sequence, it will break the bond between the G and the A nucleotide on that strand and the G and the A between uh, on that strand. Okay, now once it breaks that phosphodiester bond, covalent bond, and breaks that covalent bond right there, is there anything holding these two molecules physically together? Yeah, so then what happens is that these two fragments separate from each other. So what will happen is that you get one DNA molecule that looks kind of like this, right, where it's got the A and the A and the T and the T and the C, and it stretches off in that direction like that, and it's cut away from Okay, where you've got the G here, the C, T, T, A, A. Yeah, because we've separated that A from that G, and we've separated that A from that G. And so there were hydrogen bonds holding the you know A and the T together, but Without the, without the two, you know, the covalent bonds, the hydrogen bonds themselves are not enough to hold these two. Yeah? Now, how do we use this idea to create fragments? And the idea is quite straightforward as I see it, but if we have a gene, long DNA molecule stretching off that way, stretching off that way, and we know, or we don't have to know, but there may be a particular gene 
all right and it's got gene begins there ends there and it's got an exon and an intron and an exon and an intron and another exon there now what we could do is we could because we have information about these DNA sequences we could use a restriction endonuclease that cuts at a site on this side of one intron and on the other side of that intron. What would happen is that we would therefore cut that intron out yeah, and if we repeated the process so if this was the DNA of person A and we digested it with ECHOR1 and it cut this intron out if we repeated the process for person B with their DNA and their we cut their intron out, so it cuts on this side of the intron and it cuts on this side of the intron and we cut this intron out, same one, but this person's happens to be longer than this person. So can you see how their fragment sizes are different? Because we've cut out that intron, this person happens to have a longer fragment than this person, so we assume this person has got more STR repeats than this person in this particular gene. So, I guess the, you know, the, the basic point here is that restriction endonucleases such as ECHO-R1 are used to cut DNA on either, either side of particular introns so they cut DNA on this side and that side of an intron, producing intron fragments that will differ or be similar based on numbers of STRs. that will, sorry, that will differ in length. That will differ in length based on number of STRs. Okay, so there we have it. So now what we have is, we might have had, so if we had DNA from person A and DNA from person B, on the surface, their DNA might look exactly similar, but once we treat them with restriction endonucleases, now, it might cause the DNA to be digested in a way that because of their STRs are possibly different, it might produce differently sized fragments from both. Okay, and we must remember that differences in fragment length are based on STR repeat differences. We are now at a point where we have isolated the DNA we have created the fragments, okay? But we are not ready to do electrophoresis because these fragments might not be numerous enough. We might not have enough DNA, yeah. All right, so we've isolated DNA, we've cut fragments out, but we might not have enough DNA to do the electrophoresis. Remember, at some point, we have to visualize the DNA, and visualization depends on how many molecules of DNA that you have. So even though we could have done this with one molecule of DNA, we won't be able to see the fragments because there's not enough of them. Okay, so we need to amplify the DNA, that's the next stage.